Okay, November 10th, and we have so much going on here. Oh, oh my man. god. We got 170 people. We got people coming all the way from Windsor, from Ottawa, from Montreal. It is the entire like Canada Boogaloo. This Holy is totally the hell. place to be if you're a Smash player in Canada right now. Yeah. Oh, like, for sure. Huge, like, huge tournament. I mentioned 170 uh, freaking entrance. We got a $3,000 pot bonus. Like, insane. The, the biggest tournament in like in our like like humble little sub region. And we're also a C tier tournament yeah, in the PGR's PGR eyes. C tier. And I'd like to thank our sponsors. We got um, uh, thank you to Muka Esports for the pop bonus, of course. AXL, Basement Gaming, Durham Esports, OG Gaming, Samurai Dojo, of course, and TCR. So yeah, we got so much riding on this, man. Like that's so many sponsors. Yeah. Like this is like a regular Smash Rye, but just beefed up so much. Like Smash Rye started from such a humble beginning of like just Wi-Fi tournaments, and now look at it. Like we got like a full room here. We got the Mamoru and Cobb on stream first. Yeah, you don't see that every day, especially he a player like Mamoru. He's been gone for a while, so like I feel like this is kind of his return back into the scene. Yeah, for sure. And we got like Cobb who like. You know, as everyone knows, the resident god of Durham, you know, like, b best player in Durham. Said he'd go, uh, he win uh, weekly and then went 0-2, but you know what? He's just messing around. He's, He's giving us these strike. Definitely a Durham legend in Cobb. He kind of just showed up and then just became god. I don't, I don't know. That he sounds just like did. a JRPG. It really does. <laughs> but uh, we're going to be having Lucas versus Olimar. Now, Mamoru, he, I would say perhaps is a little bit old-fashioned. I don't know if he's completely adapted to this game yet. Like I said, he's been gone for a while. Last time I was seeing him around, it was around January. So that was like when the game just came out. Yeah. So I'm not sure if he's totally used to everything yet. But I mean, Olimar's still a pretty good character, regardless. Yeah. Like that is going to help him a lot. And also, it's like both these players like play like characters that you don't really see too, too much. Like Olimar and Lucas, like on the rarer side for sure. Olimar more, or nah, I think they're both equally rare. So, like, both players are going to be playing to, like, um, character uh, knowledge, like, unknown character knowledge here. That's weird, because, you know, everyone's crying, all of our top tier, all of our top tier, then where are they? Yeah. Who plays this character? That man right there might be the only all of our main in this room, for all we know. To be honest, like, I think he actually Like, who? Is. <laughs> who plays him? I know Frost has uh, actually a pretty good elf. That's not all of our. And he's not Manru. That's exactly true. It looks like oh, we're going house to preview. House, house preview. preview. Yeah. I don't even listen to any of the tracks from Animal Crossing. <laughs> but it's going to Smashville game one, just like they would in Smash 4. Yep. With the uh, in-game tag, I love Burst. That is that is really sweet. I love Burst Yoshi. I don't think, yeah, I don't think Burst is going to, is he registered? Uh, I'm actually not sure. I don't think he is. He totally would have gotten a splash card. Yeah. So, Maybe. I don't know. Who knows? But I know he was at CSL yesterday against uh, JW, but we don't, we, don't, we don't care about that right now. What we care about is right here, right now. Game one starting on Smashville, which interesting first stage to uh, start with. This is uh, really good for characters that are like that have uh, that excel at ledge trapping. Not sure how much uh, ledge trapping both these characters have for the most part. I think it's like decent. I mean, Mamoru's recovery is pretty good. Like I have seen him play. He does throw all the Pikmin out, and he kind of recovers not exactly to the ledge, but he'll go around kind of the drop zone area and try to dodge your edge guard. So yeah. we'll see if Cobb can adapt to that in game one. Here we go, Lucas Olimar. I know Cobb has a lot of like Three, nifty little tricks, two, so let's see if we can uh, one, see him showcased here. Go. All right, starting off. Okay, you can. T okay, first thing I thought was the hand war, how they were flying around. But Cobb, he's playing a lot of an aerial game right there, keeping him away. Ooh, that was dangerous. Ooh, nice now guy. he's off stage. And uh, it, it, there's no one particular Pikmin that like uh, Mamoru's gonna stick with, because like Lucas has like all the um, all, all the little like elements on lock here. Okay. That's so weird with tethers. You just kind of just fling right up. Oh yeah, it's special crazy CSS. But yeah, so far Mamoru's got like a pretty like uh, pretty decent like control on neutral here, just like racking up that damage. And, oh, bro, oh, an F smash in neutral. So Let's right. see this edge guard. See, you can see Mamoru going a little bit high there with this recovery, like I said. And just like that, comes even up the score. It's hard. Mamoru's having a lot of trouble getting out of disadvantage today here. Yeah, this has been really back and forth between these players. Like, they've been getting really good conversions against each other, but in a situation like this, Cobb has to use PK Thunder. 
I swear, like, it's been, like, even game, and then, like, someone just throws out a random smash attack. That works out. Honestly, I think that would work a lot more in Lucas's favor. For a stock, for sure. You always have to watch out for that. When they when they got the PK Thunder one out, you know it's coming back. It's like a boomerang. I think Memory was hoping for the uh, purple pick to like actually like uh, cancel out the Thunder, but Luke's PK Thunder is like such a beef cake. Oh, it's so big. Good luck getting rid of that one. Wow, that angle, and he Ooh. makes it to the ledge. Gosh, it wasn't able to get a good punish there. That was a good opportunity to take the stock. So when you can see here when Cobb is in Mamoru's face, he's doing a good job of kind of mitigating the Pikmin and a strong Whoa. forward air. Jeez, that got the red lightning at like 60? And jeez, no Cobb is insane. No that doesn't even spike. He's hungry for more. Oh no. The scary okay. thing about that lightning is that once he catches the opponent in it, he can actually control where the opponent gets uh, knocked. Really? Just by, just by the way he angles it. That's to me. Oh no. Oh, I thought you grabbed a blue Pikmin. It, yeah, it totally looked like it. Maybe he didn't think it would kill this percent. Maybe he's just that much of a macho Chad. He's like, I'm gonna get you to 200, <laughs> then I'm gonna destroy you. You think you have rage? You think you're stuck in here? I'm stuck in here with you? No, you're stuck in here with me. And there you go. An up smash taking the first stock, but with 97 on the board. This might oh, be a bit rough for Mamoru, but... This is easily doable, though. This is all barn. One thing we know about all Oh our, my! The yellow Pikmin saved his life! <laughs> the totally stopped the hitbox! See, that's another big thing about Cobb. He will up smash you. At some point, it's just a thing. That's like his signature move. Yep. The Lucas up smash. And honestly, like, up smash like, starts like frame one on Lucas. Like the uh, super armor, I mean. And these are really good recoveries here from Mamoru. Going Ooh. high. Never mind the PK fire catching him before he can even use the up B. And playing it back to normal neutral. Mamoru really needs to get an early stock here because he's like slowly behind on the rubber banding here. Yeah, and with a conversion like this. Oh, he tries to catch a jump. At what point is he going to realize that Mamoru is going high every time? Well, he well, he does realize and knows how, like, uh, instead of, like, running in for, like, a dash track or a dash trap, he actually just spaced with a peaky fire because new Mamoru would, like, throw a hitbox right before landing. True. Okay. All right, let's see this off stage. Go tries to catch the jump. Really smart play there. But look at the mobility there from Olimar's up without any Pikmin. These, <laughs> I like these sticks. The F smash is throwing Pikmin <laughs> back at him. Get out of here! No, I don't want it. Get him off! Get him off me, not the bees! <laughs> Bob is the best uh, Nicholas Cage main in Durham. He is Nicholas Cage. And Ooh. as you can see right there, more the F smashes. You know, I dance from that white Pikmin. And I just find it interesting that killing the blue Pikmin that's huge. Oh, like. Uh, Mamoru, sorry, he's not really throwing out like much panic smash attacks, which is good. That kill? Wow. I you guess know what? like the rage and Max the weight. Rage. Holy heck. So I noticed there, Mamoru was really struggling on both of those two stocks to finish off Kong. And I think a big part of it is honestly, he's just not spamming smash attacks. Yeah. Because when you do that as Olimar, you're like, they're so fast that you can just like keep doing them and they'll get caught eventually. Mm -hmm. Maybe he was scared of an F smash because Cobb started throwing F smashes out a lot to like knock Pikmin back yeah, at him. That's a say. But I think he was probably just throwing Pikmin at him and trying to fish for like a blue so he could up throw, but I don't but, know. Like, I, I, early on in that stock actually like Cobb did like F smash the blue Pikmin. And when you're at kill percent, like getting rid of that blue Pikmin is actually integral. It that's is. a big like option that's completely shut out of Olimar's kit now to kill you. Three. Anyway, game two back on Smashville. It's like the salty Spittoon. Like this and Yoshi's story. Because they're so small, you just beat people up. I, I never really thought of uh, Smashville as being like a smaller blaster stage. Well, I just find it's just the stage itself is small. There's not as much space as other stages like yeah. Kalos. Like if you're a character that gets juggled, you don't want to go to this stage. Yeah, especially with that platform. But anyway, Ooh, Cobb dub jab not working. Sorry, was that Falcon? And a back air spike. Ooh, catching. starting so high up. Oh man, that, see that was perfect coverage there because he knew that every time Mamoru's going high, so he catches him. And with like deadly precision too. And now he's like free to play like a, a bit of a slower game, not having to approach, and because Mamoru has to like start uh, fishing for that kill. Yeah, he just really needs to do what he's been doing already. See, there uh, you go, the up that smash. Is insane. I know Yellow does have the biggest hitbox. Dude, their ears. So you can tell, like, Cobb knows that as long as he stays outside of the range of smash attacks and that grab from a blue, he'll be fine. But there's the blue. He's got it ready. Oh, he yeah. wants that grab. It's you know he line. wants it. It's next and on the line. There you go. That's exactly what he was looking for. That's what you gotta do. 
But now this is such a close game that down smash totally looked like it exploded in Memory's face, but it didn't. Oh, that's a solid... Oh, that's a solid 10% from the white Pikmin just from sticking up real quick. That's something you, like people really don't know. It's like, you gotta get those Pikmin off you. They will stay. And Lucas, other than like Nair, can't really get them off in like a consistent way. Yeah, I figure maybe like down smash, because it's that big, or up smash even. The other thing you be working too. Ooh, the Ooh. PK freeze off stage. Uh, oh, he's still saved his jump. Good stuff. That's well. That's like a small little tip that like a lot of people don't do when it comes to like recovering. Save your jump. You don't need to use your jump every time. Exactly. Especially like with a character like Rob or something like that who like really banquets. Although while, while I've been like talking my uh, your uh, ears up, Mamoru has made the comeback. Yeah, this is interesting. And you know, with the smash attacks, he's been able to seal out the stocks. It's just. Cobb, he hasn't really been getting the same kind of conversions that he was getting in game one. In game one, he was getting so much off of small interactions, but now it's not as much. Even though he is catching some of the recovery, but right there he wasn't able to. He definitely has the upper hand now. Like now he can like slowly rack on damage without having to like worry about like fishing for a kill here. Ooh, that was too close. Very dangerous. See there you go. He, you can tell at that distance, Mamoru keeps throwing Pikmin. And Cobb knows that, so he'll just F smash. Yeah, but like all the while, like Andrew's only taking like 10, 20 percent. Like Cobb is like gone full 50, 60, but the up throw is gonna seal it. So now with 83 percent on the board, I think like a really good, like momentum-filled uh, streak here from Cobb can honestly just end the set. I also, totally see it. Also, if you notice, like, uh, Namor's actually, like, very nuanced with his, like, Pikmin plucks. He'll pluck a Pikmin, like, and completely, like, throw out, like, a move instead of, like, just plucking three Pikmin immediately. He knows that, like, he, and he also does, like, uh, be versatile plucks, I've noticed, which are actually, like, faster. Yeah, he's very resourceful with those every time he uses them. <laughs> Red Pikmin blocking the fire there. It's just the bodyguard. Ooh. Oh, he needs a smash attack or a good purple hit. Ooh, oh, see, it's a now, smash attack. It's going to get to a point where it will be dangerous. The down air and the back air. Oh! Two back airs. Oh! Double dipping Cobb. Wow. If Memoru hadn't been facing the other way, he would have grabbed lines before the Cobb got the spike. Uh, honestly, oh. you hate to see that happen because Memoru totally had that. Yeah. Lucas was at 144 and just two back airs at 40 and that's it. But there's a reason Cobb is such a legend in Durham, and you just saw why. It's because he's our shiny boy.